We're going to be performing a white blood cell differential, as well as a white blood cell and platelet estimate, together with a red blood cell morphology. This slide was created using an automated slide maker from the Beckman Coulter DXH series. Notice on this slide how the smear goes about three quarters of the way down the slide from the top, and it has already been stained, which is why it looks a little bit pink to purple. Additionally, you'll see near the top of the, of the stain, you'll see some dark purple, almost black looking precipitate. This is just artifact from the staining process. All in all, this slide looks how we want it to once it has been stained. Here we see the different parts of the smear itself. We have the body, which is typically too thick to be able to determine any cellular morphology or cell counts. And on the opposite side, we have the feathered edge. The feathered edge is going to be a little bit too thin to get an accurate cell count, although it can tell us some important information. Between those two areas, we have the optimal viewing range to find our white cell count, platelet count, white blood cell differential, and red blood cell morphology. Here we've zoomed in on that same slide in the area that I was talking about, and I've drawn on here a battlement pattern. The battlement pattern is the pathway that we are going to be following in order to make sure that as we are differentiating our white blood cells and doing our counts, that we are staying within the area of the slide that's most optimal to give us an accurate count. So as you move upward from the bottom edge, as I've indicated, you'll simply move over one field of view and continue on in the opposite direction until you come to another area that's too thick or too thin. You'll move over one field of view and continue on in the opposite direction, and so on. This is a microscopic view of what you might see in the fields of view on your slide. In the upper left, we see a field of view that is too thin. When it's too thin, there's going to be a lot of white space or dead space in between the red blood cells. You typically won't see very many white cells either. On the upper right corner, you see where the field of view is too thick. Here, the red blood cells are clumped together or overlapping. It's difficult to see one cell from another. And even though we're looking at a lower power magnification, you can easily tell that this is too thick. In the lower left corner, the field of view is just right. Notice that the red blood cells are what we call a monolayer, which means none of them are overlapping, it's one cell thick, and it's pretty uniform in distribution. Lastly, the lower right corner in the feathered edge is pretty easy to tell when you're there. There's some important morphology that you need to be able to look at out there, including platelet clumps or larger cells. So again, as you look at your slide macroscopically, you'll want to be able to identify the area that will be best suited to count and differentiate your cells and platelets. Notice the battlement pattern again reminds you of the battlements on a castle or a fortress, which is that up, over, down, over, up, over, down pattern. And this is typically what you want to follow so you don't lose where you are in the counting process. Once the slide has been mounted and I have used the scan objective to locate the area that I want to start looking at, I can see the cells are pretty well spaced. Over here it's a little bit too thin, you can see a lot of white area, and on the other side of the area I had chosen it's going to be just a little too thick. You can see the cells are bunching together, some of them are overlapping, and this is not the optimal area to be doing a count. I like this area right about here. The cells are a little bit overlapping, so I'm going to move over just a tad. Um, but typically they are pretty good looking. Uh, it's a nice mono layer. I'm going to start moving toward one of the edges of the slide so that I can be well positioned to start that battlement pattern that I was talking about. This is a little too thin, so I'm going to back down a little bit and find a nice spot that, that looks pretty even. That's a nice uh, starting point. I'm going to scoot around until I'm happy with what I've got. 
And I think something like this is where we want to begin. And again, I'm going to be moving kind of in an up and down motion. Uh, up above here, you can see towards the edge is a little bit thin. If I move over, it's looking about the same, and then I can continue my pattern downward. I'm going to probably start right about here. I'm towards the bottom edge of the slide. Um, I see one white blood cell there, and I'm going to begin my differential now. So I've completed my own differential, but I wanted to give a few notes on looking at some of these cells. Uh, as you're going through, uh, when you land on a cell, it's helpful to move the fine focus in and out a little bit so you can make note of any granules or uh, identifying characteristics that cell might have to help identify what cells you're looking at. There you just saw a, a cell that did not have a membrane and we don't want to count those. Here you see a lymphocyte which is about the size of a red blood cell. There's a segmented neutrophil, another neutrophil. I'm taking note of the red blood cell morphology as well as the platelets. That's a rather large platelet there. Uh, some stain deposit. Here's another lymphocyte stain deposit. There was a segmented neutrophil, lymphocyte, and so on. So I wanted to give you an idea of how quickly we're moving through this slide and making note of the different cells. Here we see a rather large platelet again. It's about the size of red blood cell. Um, and moving down, we're, we're starting to get into an area that's a little too thin. So right about uh, somewhere around this area, I'm going to be moving uh, over about one field of view and uh, moving in the opposite direction and continuing my differential, making note of the different cells. There's another segmented neutrophil. There's a lymphocyte. And I've moved over to another spot, a couple large platelets, neutrophil, some stain neutrophil. There's a lymphocyte and I'm going to scoot over just a little bit and focus in and out. There was a neutrophil here. When our differential is completed we now want to be able to count how many cells we see in a specific field of view. And we're going to repeat that 10 times and take the average. So here we've got a nice field. I'm going to count these cells to move to my next field of view, count these cells, and so on, again until we've counted 10 fields and we have a, a good average. You don't want to get to an area like this that's too thin. If you notice it's too thin, don't count that field and move back into the monolayer. And here I've moved on to the 100x objective. We're going to be doing the same process, but we're going to be counting the platelets in each field of view and do 10 fields and find the average. So again here we're in the nice mono layer. We might be just a little bit thin here, um, but you can see we're going to count each of those platelets. There's a rather large one right there next to some stain deposit. Um, and we'll, we'll count those. We'll come up with an average out of 10 fields and do our calculation. At this point I thought it would be helpful to kind of zoom in and out on 100x uh, on a couple of the white blood cells that you'll see most frequently. Here's a lymphocyte just so you can kind of uh, get a feel for what you're looking for. Here is a neutrophil, zooming in and out, helps you catch the granules, and you can also notice the uh, multi-lobed nucleus here. And another lymphocyte here, notice the ratio of cytoplasm to nucleus is very different from that of a neutrophil. Uh, this is a neutrophil that has no membrane, and so you can see the granules are scattering all over. We don't count these, uh, so make sure you're keeping an eye out for those membranes. Uh, we're looking again at the red cell morphology. While we're scanning through here, you can see just below this lymphocyte, we have a small clump of platelets. You want to watch for these as well. And here in this area, we can take a look at the red blood cells. They are a little bit overlapped. We might be just a little bit too thick here. But notice each of the cells has nice central pallor. They kind of have a uniform appearance. None of these are extremely strange looking or different from what other ones look like. Uh, overall, we kind of have a normal red blood cell morphology in this picture. 
And finally, you want to take some time to view the feathered edge on the outer end of the slide. You're specifically looking to see if there's any extremely large or strange looking cells that have been pushed out to the edge during the slide uh, creation, as well as any platelet clumps. Uh, so we're going to kind of look through. I want to go out further. There's nothing out there. And I'm just looking to see if any clumps have been included in this batch of cells out here. Thank you for watching. This has been a brief overview of how to conduct a white blood cell differential, a white blood cell and platelet estimate, as well as looking at the red blood cell morphology. The document that goes along with this video you will find attached, and it will go over some of the more details and finer points of how to conduct uh, these processes. If you have any questions, you may consult the document and or your textbook.